All right, so now that we have this, I'm going to come in and do just a little bit of light cleanup, just cleaning up my surfaces in the lower subdivisions. Getting a little softer transitions. I feel like this needs some volume in here going into the wing. Step back up and take a look. All right, let's look at the pine quarter. I'm okay with that. I want this coming in a little bit. Just giving it a once over, looking at my silhouette and seeing if there's anything that I want to change here. I do in the beak. Exaggerate that a little bit. Go ahead and pull this forward. I feel like they're a little too prominent, so let's bring those down. Step up in our subdivisions. And I'll do a little bit of carving here. I just want to mark in where I'm going to have that transition from feather into hard beak. We'll look at the silhouette. And I think there's a few things stylistically I want to push here. I think I want to build in a flatness here. Push that forward. And push this form a bit more. This tends to be a recurring theme in a lot of my designs, by the way. Um, and I don't, I mean, honestly, it's just something that I feel like whenever I see this lift off the back, like I saw it in Eagle, I take the opportunity to use it um, simply because, I don't know, I, I'm drawn to it. You know, that, that's the thing that just comes down to like just straight up personal bias, personal preference, um, which can be a not so good thing sometimes <laughs> and I try to just be conscious of it. 
But honestly, I think it's the, uh, I, I'm not sure if it was the last starfighter that did it to me. There was uh, some characters in there that had like, little bony protrusions in the back of their head. There was a species in that. And you guys remember the last starfighter? Have you guys seen the last starfighter? It's a great old movie, one of the first uh, movies to employ uh, full CG scenes. Well, if you feel like uh, if you feel like checking out a little bit of history, check out Last Starfighter. I know Tron gets a lot of credit, um, but Last Starfighter is definitely. I mean, I'm not saying it's a fantastic movie, but there's some cool stuff and there's some really cool uh, makeup effects done in that movie, as well as some cool early CG work. You know, um, I think about like Wally B from Pixar, right? Which is one of their first their first films. Um, and I look at Last Starfighter, I'm just like, wow. Come a long way. All right, I'm going to start elaborating on this because I'm feeling it right now. I feel like it needs some work. And, and actually, instead of talking about Last Starfighter, let me show you exactly what I'm talking about since it doesn't seem like anybody's seen it. I'm going to entice you. Let's see, what year was this? 83, 84, All right? So there's the little CG ship, um, reptilian grig. And let's see, this is the species. Um, and the females have like these, this hair that comes off the side. All right, and this, these other guys that are, this other alien species has bones that have come off the side. And it's just, you know, I was a kid when I saw this, and it's just stuck in my subconscious. So I just love that form. Anyways, there you go, a little last starfighter. I just find that, um, you know, I pull a lot from my subconscious. So it's, um, you know, I try to be very conscious of what's sitting inside of my subconscious. <laughs> <laughs> and what I've fed into it and certain elements where they come from. You know, I'm also obsessed with the movie Dune, and that definitely influences me a lot. You know, a lot of the work that those guys did, um, Predator, Terminator, um, all those 80s movies that I watched over and over and over again. You know, much like I'd say, probably for the the early Dick Smith era guys, you know that, you know the rubber the rubber mask probably influenced them a lot. You know, Creature from the Black Lagoon, um, Day the Earth Stood Still, that sort of stuff. I'm trying to create some grace here in the face. Um, and with this in here and use that as sort of like a, a decorative. <laughs> Dude, I, I feel you, Manuel. I feel this exactly the same way. I mean, I think of movies like Disney's Black Hole, you know, Maximilian in that. Really, like, that left an impact on me. Anytime I do mech stuff, Maximilian impacts me. Um, you know, and then even, I mean, I don't, I, I, I'm a film junkie. I'm a, I'm a sci-fi junkie. I'll take good, bad, I'll take it all, you know? Um, so, you know, I go back and I like watching a lot of the stuff from the earlier part of the 20th century, you know, all the way back to Mr. Millier, George Millier, the guy who first did optical compositing in film, he made a movie about him called Hugo. Um, I mean, all that stuff is so good. I mean, it's such a rich history to pull from. And then if you go back to, like, folk tales, you know, you go back to, you know, pre-film entertainment, you know, what they did in, you know, vaudevillian sets and, and stuff, and, and stagecraft, even stagecraft in the Renaissance. You know, there's a lot of rich culture to draw inspiration from. All right, so the I, let's use Damien Standard in Z-Ad mode. It's holding down Alt. I'll form a little ridge here. Do the same down at the bottom. I'm going to define this area. And 
And let's let us not forget Ray Harryhausen. <laughs> We're gonna start talking about all that stuff. I know his name is tossed around a lot, but I don't think it's tossed around enough <laughs> for the for the contribution that he made and how many people he inspired. My first exposure was, uh, and if you guys have not seen the Harryhausen films, you absolutely need to talk about some really cool creature stuff. Um, was the for me it was the Voyages of Sinbad, the Golden Voyage of Sinbad. Um, is it the uh, the Golden Voyage, Seventh Voyage, all that stuff, all the Sinbad movies. Those were like. It was like candy for me as a kid. Every time one of those would show up on TV, I'd be so stoked. And now that I can access them on the internet all the time, I don't watch them nearly enough. All right, let's go back to our eagle reference. Let me look at this eye and see what I can pull from this. Oh, for sure. The, Manuel is saying, uh, there's a griffin in the Sinbad movie. Yep, I remember that. There's also a Kali, which is like one of the first student projects that I did. Um, there's the dance of Kali. And Manuel said, you know, the funny thing is, back then there was no internet. And look at the artistic sense of those guys they came up with. By the way, Stan Winston is coming to Portugal in September. Awesome, man. That's phenomenal. Love Stan Winston. Those guys are awesome. All right, so I want to capture more of what's in here. Even though I've been elaborating on it, I'm going to use the inflate brush to pull out this roundness around the edge. You know, it's funny though, um, a lot of that stuff is, you know, it's all from libraries, right? And those guys were inspired by, you know, by books that were around. Um, I'm going to scale up the eyes right now to fill that gap. I'm like, I think of my, you know, my family's um, Austrian Hungarian, and we had a lot of, you know, I'm, I'm first generation US born, uh, and we had books like Strummelpater, and, uh, which is this horrible story about a kid who never bathes or clips his nails or uh, he's just a horrible kid and uh, all this horrible stuff happens to him because he's a horrible kid you know it's just stuff that you know that's supposed to keep kids in line these, these storybooks but it sticks with you you know when I think of monsters you know and I start thinking of like humanoid monsters I think of Strummelpater you know I think of uh, another folktale Max and Moritz and I think that generations before us had that even more because that was their primary source of entertainment right so I think that um, you know, even though they didn't have the internet, you still have that rich storytelling tradition um, that existed. Now, I want to make sure that I bring this in close to the eye. I don't want any gap there. I want the eyelid to lay flat against the eye. And how are we doing on time? We're sitting at 12. We might run a little bit over today because I do want to hit the wings. So I'm just giving you guys a warning. I understand if you can't stay for it, just catch the recording. Let's go around and shaping until I have something that I'm really comfortable with. Just looking at that silhouette. Because I want to make sure that even if my surfaces are, um, my surfaces are still, you know, my they need to be sorted out still. Like I definitely need to come in here and start elaborating on this surface and actually selling what it is. I want to make sure that my shapes are where I need them to be because 
I'm going to have to drop in edges that come along here to support this. And I want to make sure that this shape is existing and whatever I send over to Maya, um, that this ridge is the right shape because once I, once I go through and retopologize it, I don't want to have to try and reestablish this with and have the topology in place. I want these edge loops to be in place and to stay in place. And one thing I'm going to be using today when we, well, not today, but when we come back into ZBrush from Maya, which will be on Friday, um, is I'm going to end up using dynamic subdivisions. Because what inevitably what happens when you retopologize and then you start to subdivide again, um, you lose some of the volume in your silhouette. Right? It's just like hitting three mode inside of Maya. You know, you, this shrinks a little bit. You get some 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 compacting. All right. 